In this video, we're going to talk about find in timeline and find in browser in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take a look at find in browser and find in timeline in Fusion 360 and try to understand what these tools are and why we might want to use them. So this is the Porsche from our 911 series. And in this specific design, what we have is we've got some external rims that were brought in and linked. We can still see the chain link icon. And what ends up happening with designs like this is sometimes you might decide that you wanna break the link. Now, breaking the link means that all of the different sketches and features and different elements of that design are gonna come directly into your current design. And what sometimes might happen is you might get some errors in the timeline. You might get some things that break, references that no longer work. Maybe they were uh, external references in that design. Who knows what, why this happens, but this happens frequently and something that we need to deal with. Now, what ends up going on here is if your design has a pretty big list of features in the timeline, sometimes it can be difficult to go back and find where all these issues are. So in Fusion 360, we have this warning icon in the bottom right. If we left click on it, it gives us information about these different references that have failed. But if we left click on extrude in this case, what it'll do is it'll go back in the timeline, it'll find the feature that is an issue, and it'll actually expand the subgroup. So you can't really tell because there's a lot going on here, but there are lines telling us that it's highlighting this base feature. This was the new component creation. And then this, minus arrow is the expansion of that group that automatically gets created when we bring in an external component and then break the link. So once again, left clicking on these will highlight them in the timeline. So it makes it easier for us to find them and figure out what the issue is. We're not gonna go through the example of fixing this issue here. I just wanted to note that it's really helpful to find these because it not only expands the group, but it'll highlight the timeline and scroll to that position for you. Now, in addition to that, Oftentimes you'll find that there are sketches that you may wanna reuse. Now, if you have a design that has sketches at the top level, and you also have a design that has sketches in multiple components, especially once you get hundreds of sketches, it can be really difficult to go back and find those. When you select things in the timeline, they are highlighted on the screen, even if they're not visible, and it'll highlight the location of that. Now, in this case, it's in this component for the front wheel. But if we are to right click on that, and select Find in Browser, Fusion 360 will go a step further and it'll expand that component for us. Now, if we do this again, you can see now it's highlighting the Sketches folder. If we right click and do Find in Browser, nothing else is happening because that folder isn't expanded. But if we are to expand it, we can right click and Find in Browser and it'll go through and it'll highlight those for us. So you can see here now it's highlighted Hub Revolve, Hub First Extrude, all of these different sketches can be found. It takes a little investigative work to expand some of these at some point, but um, in most cases, it will be a little bit easier for you to find where those are. So you can make them visible and you can use them for whatever feature you need to create. The same is true for features, but they're going to highlight the bodies or components. So for example, if we wanna find this in the browser, again, it's highlighting the component, it's highlighting the bodies folder. We have to expand that. And then we can find that body, in this case, hub, that this feature was used on. So once again, not as helpful as the sketches, but it can help you identify where bodies are that are the parent of these features. Now, this is one thing that Fusion is kind of missing is that parent-child relationship that you have in other CAD programs. So oftentimes it can be a little bit difficult to find what a feature belongs to, what a sketch belongs to, and you just need to do a little bit of work to investigate that. The other thing that we can do, so let's say that we scroll this timeline out quite a bit and we have a sketch, we can right click on that and find it in the timeline and Fusion will automatically scroll the timeline to that position and highlight the sketch for you. So that can be a little bit more helpful in terms of organizing the user interface to figure out where that is. But once again, it does take a little bit of extra work to figure it out because you already have to know the sketch location inside of the browser, in a component, in a subfolder, and so on. Uh, in the topic of subfolders or groupings, there are things that we can do to simplify our views to help clean this up a little bit. 
Now, when you bring in a component and you break its link, it automatically is inside of a group. But this is something that we can do as well by simply selecting different items in the timeline. We can right click and we can create a new group. Once you have a group, you can right click and you can rename it. In this case, I'm gonna call it REF for reference. And then it can just stay minimized. You can always hover over it to see what's inside of it or you can expand it as needed. But that will allow you to clean up the timeline and organize your designs. I found that with Fusion 360, it takes a very specific approach to make sure that the timeline stays clean. If you're more into direct modeling, then there are different approaches that you can take. But if you're trying to capture the history, you need to think about the design as a whole and figure out which components you want to create first. And I like to try to do that as much as possible, but there's always going to be a point where you throw up your hands and then you just sort of brute force a design to get through it. At this point, that's gonna be all we're gonna cover in this video. I really just wanted to focus on find in browser, and find in timeline. There are also find in window. So if you have a component, you can right click find in window. That's pretty helpful because it will zoom to fit based on that component. And it, we can go down another level. If we go to the hardware and we find a specific bolt and we do find in window, it'll zoom to fit on just that body inside of that component. So that can be pretty helpful, especially when you're working on big designs that have a lot of bolts, or a lot of hardware, or just simply a lot of bodies and components. Using that right click option can simplify finding that component. Now, I will say that things like isolate don't really work on bodies inside of components. So if you right click and say isolate, notice that it isolated the entire rim, not just that body. So if you like to use isolate and unisolate to uh, sort of narrow down your designs, they really need to be components at the component level. So for example, if I select this component and isolate, everything goes away and everything comes back. But the body level, it doesn't really work like that. So if you turn each of these bodies into their own components, then isolate and unisolate will work. But then, of course, you have more to deal with in the timeline as well. So you have to pick and choose your battles, figure out what workflow is best for you. At this point, that's all we're going to cover. So if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.